Hey, good afternoon, evening, morning. I promised to care to come earlier on, but I couldn't make it. Uh, I went out evangelism. That took kind of long than I expected. I know I've been away. I did apologize for having been away for some for such a long time. I went on a mission trip for almost two months. That really, really got me tired. I needed a lot of rest, uh, which I'm not sure if I use it really effectively, but I tried my best to rest and I had to take care of a, a lot of other things. But I uh, thank the Lord that I'm back. Um, um, I'm starting to share more messages as they are being downloaded by the Lord. Try my best to yield to the Holy Spirit to hear what he has to say. Please pay attention to, don't pay attention to what I'm saying. Pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you as you are listening. Um, I'm only a vessel. It's a privilege, it's an honor to be a vessel of God. Um, I always like to reach people with the purity of heart, not with the eloquence of speech, but with the power through the word of God. So please allow me to present the message God has given to me to share with someone. I believe a lot of people are always in need of the, in need of the word. Um, what I, I see when I go out on the streets that people need the word all the time. People are always in the valley of uh, decision making, They're trying to figure out what to do in life, trying to make it happen, trying to work out, okay, what is the next step, seeking for direction, asking for the way. So when we show up there, uh, telling them that God loves them, there's hope for them, they really open up, they really get excited. So it's an honor to come to someone today is, you know, as well, to let them know that uh, there's hope for you. The Bible says there's hope for all the living. The fact that you are living today, there is a serious hope for you. I'm glad, I'm so glad about that truth because it comes from the word of God. Hallelujah. Um, I'm gonna pray quickly. Before I really get started, my name is Tim Bissa. Uh, I'm, I'm called by God. I, I, I don't like to use titles, but I'm called to preach the gospel. I'm, I'm mostly out in the streets. Um, sometimes I go to churches, teach evangelism, um, but mostly I, I'm out on the streets uh, finding those that are in need of Jesus, finding those that are in need of direction. Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. Finding those that are in need of the truth, finding those that are in need of the way. So that way is Jesus, that way, that truth is Jesus and that life is Jesus. And most of the people, most of the things people are looking for, they revolve around the way, the truth and the life. And that way, the truth and the life is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is the only one way to the Father. Amen, hallelujah. You know, the message that I want to talk to you about today is, uh, um, is about the keys, the life keys. I'm going to use the keys in the natural, natural keys. Using the wrong keys can be um, and can cause a lot of delay. It's important to have the right kind of keys to get to where you want to go. Uh, the life keys, hallelujah, the keys that actually work. Um, oh man, I have a video actually like that's like three minutes, I think it's about three minutes that shows um, how just, it's kind of like just an illustration really about the keys, how to really, uh, what people are going through every day in life, trying to make, trying to to find ways in life, trying to find the way, trying to find the truth, trying to find the life using the keys. So I'm going to use the practical example of the keys in the natural. That's why I have these keys with me. It's going to make a lot of sense, I believe. I pray that it does. So, um, okay. I have a couple of 
keys here. I have a lot of keys actually. Um, I'll show you this bunch of keys. I mean, it's not a whole lot of keys, but it's quite a number of keys. It's all mixed with all different things, you know, gym keys and um, key holders. Um, but I just want to, you know, do kind of a, a bit of an experiment here. I want to show you what I actually want to talk about. Uh, maybe you'll get a better understanding. Sometimes practical things, they make a whole lot of difference. So allow me to all start to try the keys. Uh, I'll try that one first. Hmm. It doesn't open. I'm going to try to open that door as well, that bottom. Uh, what do you call it? Locker, whatever. It doesn't open. Okay, let me try a smaller key because the holes look smaller. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to turn it in all ways and all kinds of angles. Uh, but none of them are working. Okay, none of these so far. And then I'm going to try another one. Um, this one, okay, you see this one? That one goes in. It kind of goes in, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't open at all. Okay, it doesn't open. Right. Let me try a couple of more keys. Um, maybe I'll get it right. Okay, this one is smaller. Maybe it's gonna make a bit of a difference. But none, nothing is happening. Okay, let's see this one. Okay, that went in. Okay, same thing with that one. It's uh, it's going in, but it's not actually opening. I'm turning it all um, in all directions, all kind of angles, trying to get it to open because I'm trying to go inside the door and this is the house I'm trying to get into because everything I need is in this house. Everything I need, yeah. I mean everything, literally everything I need. Yes, I can survive without it, but I, I need to get in here. Even to get into, you know, the pockets and everything that are inside. I'm going to try one more key, one more key. Seems like it might work, but it doesn't even go in. Look, it's smaller, but it's smaller, but it's not even going in. You know, when it's smaller, it maybe it's supposed to make a bit of a difference and just go in easily. Right. Um, now, I'm going to try one last key. 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 I hope this one is going to work. Okay, this one is turning. Okay, this one is turning. Great, that opened. That is opening. Okay, just close the door behind me. Right. Awesome. Um, I believe uh, a lot of you have seen that illustration. It's just a very simple one, but really, it really simply means every door needs the right key. These are the keys in the natural. These are the keys, physical keys that everybody knows about. But I like to use those practical examples. Practical, I believe, when we have um, an, an image of the practicality of doing things. It makes more sense and it's very easy to keep in your mind. It becomes indelible in your mind. Amen. So every door needs the right key. Keys generally look the same. Some are smaller. They look like you can just go easily. Some are bigger. They look like they may, they may not fit. Sometimes um, the keys that look like they may not fit actually is the keys that may, that, you know, that are actually going to fit into your place. It's just a matter of making sure that you use the keys that are assigned for that particular door for you to go in 
so that you can go in and access the things that you need to access. We need to access things in life generally, really. So um, we always need the keys. One way or another, we will need the keys, spiritual keys and natural keys. So um, many, many generally are, are, are trying to use the keys that do not work because you're trying to work it out with your head. How is this? How am I going to access that? How am I going to access that? How am I going to make that happen? How am I going to, you know, raise my kids in the, in the right way? How am I going to uh, keep that husband when that marriage is breaking apart? How am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to pay off that mortgage? How am I going to make things happen? Generally, there's a whole lot of things that People are so, so worried about what are my kids going to eat? What are they going to drink? So much that people are so concerned about when the word of God clearly says not to worry about anything, but in prayer and supplication, make our request known to the Lord with thanksgiving. Nothing in this world adds any, any productivity into your life, any, any stasha into you by worrying, and the Bible also says, God yeah, God did not see uh, worry about things, but he says he will be concerned about things, but he said he will perfect all that concerns you, but you need the right keys. And the key that, that, that I wanna talk about, the key is the application of scripture, is the application of the word of God. This is what you need in life. Specifically apply the word of God, the way it's supposed to for, the way it's supposed to go into that particular situation. Because the word of God is there to access that very thing that you are looking for. Amen. So that you've got to be very, very specific with the word of God in terms of applying the scripture into your situation. Amen. You know, um, in the book, in the book of um, the scripture, the main scripture that I'm going to use is the scripture that is very well known by a lot of people. A lot of people, they use it. Some people, they use it contextually. Some people, they use it out of context. Some really, it's not even so much about people being right or wrong, but it's about sometimes they don't even know what to do. It's they, they, they do what they have heard, they do what they've been told. So the scripture is in the book of Matthew 6, 33. Everybody knows about it. I like that scripture very well. I like that verse very well. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Seek first the kingdom of God. These are the keys. This is the application of scripture, of scripture specifically for what I want to talk about, accessing uh, that very thing in life that you are looking for. The Bible says, when you seek the Lord, in the book of Jeremiah 29, 30, I believe, yes, when you seek the Lord with all of your heart, you will find the Lord. There's no doubt when you're doing things, when you're seek, uh, uh, seeking the Lord with all of your heart, you will definitely find the Lord. It's impossible to try and seek God and you do not find him. Those who, don't, who, who think they have said, sought God and they have not found him, they have not done it enough. The Bible says again, uh, those who come to God must come knowing that he is, that's Hebrews 11, right? Hebrews 11, 6. He says, those who come to God must come knowing that he is, and he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This is all about diligence. This is not by might or by power, 
but by the spirit of the living God. When you begin to have that right heart, the heart in the right place in the area of seeking God for your life specifically, you will definitely find him. Trust me, I know I have been there and at some sometimes I thought I wasn't really finding the Lord and really I wasn't seeking the Lord. I was doing my own things, but at the back of my mind thinking I was seeking the Lord, but going that way and that way, but really I wasn't really seeking the Lord. I was seeking my own will. I was seeking my own ways. I was seeking the heart, my heart desires. But the Bible says, when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will surely grant you the desires of your heart. I think that's in the book of Psalms 37, 25 or whatever, or 37, 4. It says, when you delight yourself, pampering yourself in the Lord, David, remember, David uh, encouraged himself in the Lord. That is part of seeking the Lord in whatever situation that may be taking place in your life. Amen. I said like the key is the application of scripture in your life specifically. God created, hallelujah. Um, everything by the power of his word, by his words. He spoke the word and things were created. That's the same word that we are using today. That's the same word that he is, uh, you know, instructing us uh, to use. He said, in the beginning, that's in the book of John chapter one. He says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made. In him was life and life, um, life, uh, that life was the light of man. I'm sorry. Life was the light of men. This is where I'm heading exactly. People are trying to find life without the right source, without the right keys trying to open the doors like the illustration I, I, I made with that video. People trying to what, use, the, use the car keys to open the door, trying to use a small key for the mailbox, trying to open the door. It will definitely not work. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of break down that scripture. I'm not going to be long, I promise you. I'm going to break down the, the scripture that's sick, that says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, in that verse, in that, you know, Matthew chapter 6, he first talks about um, people are seeking for things uh, like food, like drinks. Do not worry about these things, for your father knows exactly what you are in need of. I know, I, I, I've been in that situation for a very long time. I had to, you know, I had to learn a lot of things in this journey of knowing the Lord, in this journey of seeking the Lord, in this journey of, 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 uh, of walking, of going towards the kingdom of God, being in the kingdom of God here on earth. You learn to live by faith, you learn to live by listening to God, you learn to live by, by, by scripture, you learn to live, you be led by the spirit, really, that's the, the, the conclusion of that, to be led by the spirit. When you're led by the spirit, you are classified or categorized as the son of God. So I'm gonna break down the scripture, the seeking, the first, the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. He says, seek first. You can't find God. You, you, um, who is that? In Jeremiah 29, 13, he says, when you seek God with all of your heart, you will definitely find him without a doubt. Not so long ago, I was there trying to seek God. I was actually, I wasn't even seeking God. I didn't know I was seeking God, but I was going all over the place trying to make things happen, trying to work things out in my head. I've, I've mentioned that before. It's in, in, in part of my testimony traveling trying to uh find this and this and this and that you know try to get the satisfaction you know through a whole lot of things really but really i never got any of that satisfaction it's because i was using the wrong keys trying to open the doors that would i was actually trying to open the spiritual doors 
with the natural things. That's why, that's what a lot of people are doing in life. Because they don't know any better. That I fully understand. That people don't know any better. This is why ministers, this is why men and women of God are placed there to put that understanding into people. It's an honor, it's a privilege to be part of that. Amen. So seeking is really is diligently trying to find. Hallelujah. It's a, a, a diligent seeking, it's a diligent finding with all of you, with your mind, with your soul, with your body, everything that's in you. That's the, it, it, it's, it's the depth of the search. It's set, you're searching deeply for whatever it is that you are looking for. Amen. It goes on again, again, it says uh, in the, then seek first, that the, the, the first part is talking about prioritizing, putting God first in all the things that we are doing, putting God first. I'm talking about when you wake up in the morning, I'm talking about when you're about to make some serious decisions in life, even if they are not serious. Some decisions, even if they are done, not serious according to you, but they may affect your life in the future. This is why it's very highly important to seek God for each and everything, even that very thing, that, that taking a, a step of moving to another city, that taking a step of moving to another job, that taking a step of even moving houses, that taking a step of even selling your house or buying another house, those little things, they can make a whole lot of difference in your life because that's where your destiny is tied. That's where your, 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 your destiny is tied. Really, that's really what I'm trying to say. That's why I said earlier, in the beginning, he was the word. In the beginning, the word was with God. He was the word. And the word was the light of man. The word of God. That is the word of God. But applying it, applying the word of God specifically. Recently, I had a situation, you know, I, I, without going into, you know, too deep into that, but I had a situation that I, I kind of like, I was watching it happening. I'm like, okay, like I can see this thing is happening and it's kind of like really frustrating. And I'm like, okay, how do I deal with this? And the first day passed and I kind of like, you know, played around with it really thinking, oh, okay, oh, it's kind of passed, it's okay. And then the next day, same thing happened. And then the third day, same thing happened. And I realized, okay, there is something that I'm not doing here. I am not applying the word. But when it happened for the third time, I realized that there is something that I have not done that I need to do. And I needed to apply that very thing, that very moment it was taking place. It had to do with the phone call that I was, I kept receiving a phone call. I kept missing the phone call. I kept miss, it was a very important phone call. I kept missing the phone call. I kept, you know, for the past three days, whenever they tried to call me back and the number was blocked, like, I don't know what was even happening with my phone, but I got to find out where the problem was. But when, when I finally, on the third day, hallelujah, third day, when I, the resurrection power of Christ began to rise up on the inside of me, which I didn't even know. But when that thing happened, when I missed that call again, I realized, okay, I got to do something here. If I don't apply this thing spiritually, it's not going to take place in the natural. So I had to release a prior point immediately. I'm telling you the truth. As I was, I, I was on the other call and I missed that other call for the third time, the same way I had been missing it for the past three days, when I actually needed to speak to the person, it was very highly necessary for me to speak to that person. You know, it's not, I mean, without going to, to, into details, I got that phone call got cut off by my own hands. How is that even possible? If you don't want to call it demonic, but we thank God because there's a resurrection power of Jesus. There's a resurrection power of God that makes that 10 things that what the enemy intended for evil or bad, God turns it around for good. So when I release that prayer point, within a couple of minutes, I receive a phone call from another place within the same company giving me what, give, 
really giving me what I was looking for. Hallelujah. That was so powerful. And I realized, wow, this is the key right there. Because I keep rising up these keys. So that, and I realized, I needed to apply the word specifically. When I apply the word specifically, I released a prayer point. I released the word of God. It spoke to the atmosphere. It spoke to the situation. And I saw things happening within seconds. So that's the key that I'm trying to give you here. That's the key God is trying to give you through my lips. You've got to apply. Seeking first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Using the word of God, really seeking, seeking first the kingdom of God, seeking first the kingdom of God, you're seeking God himself because there's many kings, but you talk about the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The, uh, in the book of, um, oh God, I think it's Romans 14, 17. Yes, 14, 17. The kingdom of God is not food or drink, but joy, peace, in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, is joy, peace, right, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. So you need that joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. That is really what really entails the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a very deep, long, long, long subject, which I'm going to deal with it very, I mean, later on. But right now, just in the nutshell, just to kind of like, you know, get your attention about what really the kingdom of God it is um um when i think it's what, what what does it say here when it explains it i looked it up in the dictionary i looked it up in the dictionary to hear what it actually says hallelujah thank you jesus mighty is your name yeah that's right it says uh, the will of God is it's it is really the will of God for your life. Sorry, I diverted there. But it says the kingdom of God is not food or drink, but joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. That's in the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 17. It's not what you think it is. When the God talks about uh, your his kingdom come, his will be done. The kingdom of God is really what everything he considers good of you. Like his kingdom, man, I, I need really the right way to, to describe the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. I've got it now. Yes. A country, a state of territory ruled by a king or a queen, a round domain, dominion, country, land, nation, state, sovereign, state, province, territory. Hallelujah. The spiritual, Nikki, this is the, this is the one. The spiritual reign or authority of God. That's right. So this is what you need to do here, is to seek that place where God is. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 91, usually people, they use that scripture of Psalms 91 um, for protection or when they're having a bad dream at night. And the Bible says, the one who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty and you will say of the Lord, hallelujah, he is a, his refuge, hallelujah. So really it's talking about remaining in that place, remaining in that place where God wants you to be, where God has placed you, trying your best and not by might or by power, not to come out, be led by the spirit like the Israelites were led by fire at night and they were led by cloud during the day. So you yourself can do it like I try my best to do it. Hallelujah. So that's why then that's where you will not miss God. That's where you will be able to seek what God um, is, 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 is saying the kingdom. is talking about it, seeking first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The only, and the thing, the kingdom of God, you know, God is, is the one who is the creator of heaven and earth. He's the one who created you and me. Some people generally, they try to be witnesses for God. Um, but I personally, I don't believe I should be witnessing for the creator of heaven and earth because God 
because um, the, the universe declares God's majesty. Just my existence, just the color of my skin and looking at the color of someone else's skin, just the conception of the baby, man, just the conception of the baby, just looking at how, how the baby is conceived and kept in the mother's womb for nine months without any interference. I mean, just, it, 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 that means no witnessing because the universe, just everything that's happening here on earth, it is declaring God's majesty, him being the king of kings, him being the Lord of lords, being your creator, him being your father. Amen. Hallelujah. He's seeking first the kingdom of God. And all these things that we are looking for, we have been searching for, especially if you are already born again. You are searching for the wrong thing in the wrong place, using the wrong keys. If you continue to try to search um, for the natural things that you are trying to acquire in the natural for the spiritual things, you're trying to acquire them in the natural. So you gotta start using, you better stop, start using the spiritual keys, which is getting on your knees, seeking the Lord with all of your heart. He says, when you call upon me, I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things you don't even know. This is why it's important for even our conversations to be pure before God, even our thoughts to be pure, because the Bible says, as the man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Even like when the, 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 he's saying in Isaiah 65, 24, before they called, I answered them. Hallelujah. So it means our conversations should be pure and fruitful so that when the angels are listening, when God is listening, he's in the process of answering a prayer, not in the process of trying to try to figure out what are they saying is what they are saying pleasing to me amen where was i i think i kind of got lost there but it says all these things shall be added unto you everything pertaining you have everything pertaining to life and godliness everything is already been granted to you by just a virtue of being the child of god by just the virtue of being the son of God, by just the virtue of being born again, being born of water and being born of the spirit, by just of having confessed Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, believing that God raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Knowing that uh, he is sitting, he is alive today. He is not a dead God. He's not a dead somebody that you can, you cannot even hear you when you call upon him. He is now sitting at the right hand of the Father, Father, alive forevermore, waiting to hear your prayers, waiting to hear you. Hallelujah. It says all these things. So you don't have to search for these things anymore. But when you apply the right keys, the right keys applying the kingdom of God, talking about it. Uh, talking, talking to people about Jesus, evangelizing. One way, your mission field is wherever that you are planted. He says, after that, the Holy Ghost came upon them, they were filled with power to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Samaria, and Judea. Your Samaria and your Judea, your region where you are, your country where you are, your workplace, uh, your school, <laughs> even like, uh, you know, I. Uh, Recently, I, 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 you know, I joined the gym and then I, I witnessed there, like, seriously. I get into the place, I get into the sauna, I get into, into the, I target, literally target people to talk to them about Jesus. I didn't, even, I didn't think that was going to be a mission field. But, I mean, I can count since I've been there for like three weeks. A lot of souls have come to the knowledge of Jesus right in the middle of that heat in the sauna or in the gym. Creating, strike a conversation. You've got to come to Jesus because that's all I talk about. It may not be the only thing I talk about, but that's the main major thing that I talk about. That's part of seeking the kingdom of God, doing what is pleasing to God. That's part of uh, some people who are searching for their purpose, finding out what God has called you to do, finding out what is your purpose for living. That's part of seeking the kingdom of God, finding out what is it, 
that I'm supposed to do for this season. Finding out what is it that I'm supposed, I'm supposed um, to be doing uh, about where I am right now or about, or about where you are. Because some people, they're in places temporarily. So you've got to apply the right keys. Asking the Lord to guide you, asking the Lord to, 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 to guide you and to lead you, to show you the way, to guide you every step of the way. He says he guides the steps of the righteous. This righteousness, he says, the, the, the kingdom of God is not food or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You cannot obtain that righteousness in your own strength. It's impossible. You cannot obtain that. Righteousness is not just doing things right. It's doing things right according to God. Hallelujah. He says, a man is made righteous by believing that, that Christ was raised from the dead by God. That is righteousness. That's the beginning of righteousness. Of, of walking in righteousness. You cannot start to walk in righteousness in seeking the kingdom of God by just thinking, now I'm going to do things right. You're doing it wrong. You're doing it in the flesh. you got to do it in the spirit. This is why you must be born again, be born of water and be born of the spirit. Because when you are born of the spirit, you are able to apply and do the things of the spirit. Because you cannot read this word. You can read this word of God without being born again. That's why a lot of people, they try to read the word of God without being born again, without having the Holy Spirit. That's why they have a lot of disputes in their head, trying to think it's contradictory or oh, many, many, many years back, this and this happened. The Bible is so contradictory because they are reading it without the owner. They are reading it without the Holy Spirit. So when you do that, you will not get it right. Trust me, my sister and my brother. So I'm here right now. God wants to set you free today from using the wrong keys. You got to use the right keys to get it right. Hallelujah. You know, I was not even fully prepared to do this. But for some reason, having not been here for such a long time, I kind of like, oh, like, you know, I know that I got to do this, but I wasn't really, you know, fully together. But I thank God that, you know, um, he's helped me. It's not about being perfect, but it's about delivering what the Lord wants to say to people, really. We're supposed to be teaching the kingdom. So that was my starting point. So like I said earlier, that you cannot do this seeking the kingdom of God, applying his principles according to his kingdom, according to his kingship, according to his lordship, without <laughs> being born again. Being born again is being born of the water and of the spirit. Confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, the Lord of your life, your savior, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. It is unto believing that, that you are made righteous. That's the righteousness that I'm talking about. That's in the book of Romans 10. It is unto believing that you are made righteous. Hallelujah. Oh, I love this part. I just, I just love uh, when it comes to the part of people coming to the knowledge of Jesus. It fills my heart with so much joy. I can't even explain it. I don't know what happened, but I know I was touched by Jesus. I want you to be touched by Jesus. That's really the main thing. Because I don't understand that like you can try to walk this journey without Jesus. Because I've tried to walk the journey without Jesus. It's impossible. You cannot do it. Simply. Period. You cannot do it. So it's my honor, it's my privilege. And really, truly humbling to give you an opportunity, or for God to give you an opportunity through my lips today to apply that righteousness of seeking the kingdom of God through his righteousness by accepting mm -hmm. Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Reach your hand to Jesus. Let him grab you. Introduce yourself. He already knows who you are anyway. But all he's waiting for is for you to say yes. Amen. So I'm going to, before I go too, you know, too long, I don't want to go too long. I don't like to pass it, you know, many, many minutes. Um, but I want to give you an opportunity. As a servant of the Most High God, it's my honor, it's my privilege to let you know there is Jesus who saves. 
There is God who loves you so much, who will never leave you, who will never forsake you. There is that one who, who cares so much about you, who wants to perfect everything that concerns you. There is that God who knows the numbers of your hair. <laughs> there is that God who knows what's in your heart before you even speak it. There is that God who knew your name before you were even conceived. Your name may have been changed, but he knows your real name. He knows your name. And if, and if your name was meant for evil, for evil or bad, or you were named after some, some evil thing, but God, when you get born again, when you get saved, coming to the knowledge of Jesus, having that personal relationship with Jesus, he says he makes all things work together for good because now you are called according to his purpose. That's in the book of Romans 2, 8, 8, 28. Hallelujah. So it's, it, it, it's, it's your opportunity today to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, make him your Lord and Savior. For I believe, I personally believe that whatever your Lord is while we are here on earth will be your Lord when it's over one day. So make the right Lord your Lord. Make the right God your God. You want to serve a God that's living. You want to serve a God that's alive. Hey Amen. I've been, I've, I've been in, a, in a situation of serving gods that are dead. I've been there. That's how I grew up. It's just the way it is. They were not living. And I thank God they prayed for me when they were still living that I should come to the knowledge of Jesus. Those I, I understand that, uh, you know, my great grand from my paternal side and my maternal side, they were both, they were uh, preachers. But I thank God they prayed me into salvation. And I believe many, even of my family members, both sides of the family, they are called into ministry. But don't worry about that. God is taking care of it. Hallelujah. I love you, my brothers and my sisters. Praying for you. But today I want to give you an opportunity to come to the knowledge of Jesus. Make him your Lord and Savior is the only one way to the Father. You're trying to, to know God without Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're trying to approach it in a way that's not correct. If this is not about the right and the wrongs, but it's about doing, applying things, uh, applying the word correctly, specifically. It's like trying to open with the keys that I was using, opening with that key. Some, some keys, they turn the other way. But we're trying, we're trying to access a place with the wrong keys. It's like trying going to church um, without having Jesus in your heart. That's not going to get anyone to heaven. That's not going to get anyone to a place of, of um, eternity with God. But it will get someone to a place of lost eternity, which really, I don't like to talk about that. I like to talk about the one, the greater one, because greater is he that's living in me than the one that lives in the world. Amen. So today is your chance. Today is your opportunity to come to the knowledge of Jesus. You may have walked away from the Lord. That is still your chance to come to the knowledge of Jesus and solidify that relationship with Jesus. You, maybe you, you never even knew what I was talking about, that there's anything like Jesus, there's anyone like Jesus, there's, any, there's anything like salvation or being born again. Today is your chance to come to the knowledge of Jesus. Then you can access those places with the right keys, having Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Really, he is the key. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Some of them, the, you know, the devil is lying to you, saying you're not saved, you're sin every day or whatever. Whatever the devil may be trying to, you know, to say to you, you may have lost your loved ones and that pulled you away from the Lord. But remember, there's a turning point. There's things that take place in life that the enemy tried. He intended for you to pull you out of the Lord. But let that be a turning point and say, out of that situation that happened, I'm going to follow the Lord instead. I'm going to follow God instead. I promise you, your life will never be the same again. I'm going to preach a message on that. It's very important. I'll be giving a testimony of some things that took place in the past. I believe a lot of people will be touched and they will change. Their lives will change, not because of me, because of the salvation of the Lord. Today, I want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, lifting up your hands to Jesus, saying that, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I, I, God, just say maybe, um, God, I believe you sent your only son to die for me. 
and I thank you for this. I accept you, Jesus, today as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I believe you die for me. I believe you are risen from the dead. God raised you from the dead. And you are coming back again for me. I thank you for this. Fill me today with your Holy Spirit. And I ask you that you help me to tell others about Jesus. To tell others about the truth I have received. To tell others about the joy and the peace I have received. From today, I am saved. From today, I am born again. All of my sins are forgiven. And I am indeed on my way to heaven because I have Jesus Christ in my heart. Hallelujah. You pray that prayer. The Bible says, all of your sins are forgiven. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Begin to walk in freedom, not like you are, you are in chains, like you were only a few minutes ago before I spoke to you. Begin to actually apply freedom. If you were bound in some sort of way, don't begin to walk like you are still bound. Begin to walk like you are free because you are set free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Because you've confessed your sins when you come. The Bible says in the book of 1 John, in 1 9, it says, When you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you. He has forgiven you. The Bible says, Now that you are saved, you are born again, you've confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, You are born again. All of your sins are forgiven. Amen. Those are good news. That's why Christ died for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you have not done that, I'm going to give you another chance. Because the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy 30, 29, I think. It says, I call heaven and earth as a witness against you today that Timbisa is witnessing to you, that's what I say to people in the streets. I call heaven and earth as a witness against you today. I set before you life and death. God is setting before you life and death. Hallelujah. Is setting before you blessing and cursing out of all those that choose life, and that life is life eternal, that you may access those places with those keys, with the correct keys. Amen. So today, you can just say again, if you did not get that chance, say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for me. I believe you have risen from the dead. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the passion for the lost. I am saved. I am born again. All of my sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you are saved. Your sins are forgiven. But remember always to run to God, not from God. He loves you so, so dearly. He does indeed have a great and a wonderful plan for your life. Also, now I'm going to take, uh, after you are saved, you are born again. We all have a responsibility to do the work of an evangelist, to tell others about Jesus. If you want to know, how to go about doing that, you can just text me or whatever or in your church or whatever. Begin to talk to people about Jesus. Pastor Rodney, you know, my pastor where I go, he says that's the only that's the you know only thing that we're gonna take to heaven. Uh not none of those things that we have here on earth physically. We're only gonna take souls, we're gonna only gonna take people. So it's necessary for you begin to apply the, the, the great commission to begin to talk to people about Jesus. If you look in the book of, of John, Andrew led his brother Nathan, um, 
they, they began to tell each other. So there's no way when you've received Jesus, when you've received the love of God, you will not tell others about that. It's highly necessary. It's very important. That's one of the most, most important things after your salvation, after you've been saved. Begin to tell others about Jesus. Your life will never be the same again. And in order to do that, the Bible says, after that the Holy Ghost came upon you, they were filled with fire to be, they were filled <laughs> with the Holy Spirit to be witnesses. It also says, Jesus, uh, Luke 3, 16, that was Jesus himself. He says, uh, oh, that was, was it John? I think it was John saying, uh, Jesus will baptize you. Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit and fire. So in order for you to have the ability, the anointing to go out there and talk to people about Jesus, you need the Holy Spirit. Applying the, the scripture in the book of Acts 1.8, after that the Holy Ghost came upon them, they were filled with power. They didn't just go. They needed to have the Holy Spirit. It's one thing being born again and, and having the Holy Spirit is but another thing being baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. This is what I'm about to do right now. This is what God is about to do in your life to get you filled with the fire of God that you need to be a witness. That power and that fire and that anointing, the reason for it is not to quake and shake only, is for you to change from the inside out, hallelujah, and begin to be a witness. Tell others about Jesus. There's more than 7 billion people in the world. They are waiting for you. Hallelujah. They are waiting for you. Just tell them that Jesus loved them. Begin to read the word. Then you will know what to say to them. That God raised Jesus from the dead. That is making the person righteous when they believe that. Confessing with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's all they need to say. Then lay hands on them if they are sick because we are filled with power now because we are filled with the salvation of the Lord you are anointed to preach the gospel it doesn't take a whole lot it takes you believing it takes you doing it it's in the application again I'm going back to the application hallelujah you do the application and God will do the rest the great commission does say hallelujah God was with them he said go ye into the world and preach the gospel, hallelujah, and he made a promise in the book of Matthew 28 at the end that he will always be with them and up to the end of the world, up to the end of time, I can't remember how it says exactly, but there is a promise that comes with it that is saying that God will be with you, the Holy Spirit is with you, so now lift up your hands to Jesus, he is the one who's going to fill you with that fire and that Holy Ghost, Hallelujah, that you may be a witness, that you may be, have that anointing. It is the anointing of God that destroys every yoke of bondage. Hallelujah. So lift up your hands to Jesus. Lift up your hands to God. He's going to fill you. Hallelujah. If you want to do it on your forehead or on your belly, because the Bible says out of your belly, in the book of John 7, I think 7, 38, it says out of your belly, hallelujah, shall flow rivers of living waters. Let those living waters flow out of you today in the name of Jesus. Just begin to speak it out. Hallelujah. I sense the presence of God and the anointing of the Spirit of, Spirit of God. Whatever it is that comes out of your mouth, begin to speak to the Father. If it's a language that you don't understand, just begin to speak it out. Don't be frightened by it. It is the Spirit of God beginning to fill you. Father, I thank you, God, that these your precious people, they are being filled right now. Touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, God. Let them run for you, God. Set them ablaze on fire, God, I pray, that they will preach the gospel all the days of their life, Father. Touch them, Father, I pray, 
in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, I thank you, God, that their lives will never, ever be the same again. It is a turning point in their lives today. There will be witnesses. Fill them with your fire, God. Touch them afresh, oh God. Those who have walked away, touch them afresh, oh God. Those who have walked away from even witnessing, oh God, touch them afresh, I pray. In the name of Jesus, begin to speak it out. Whatever language comes out of your mouth, begin to speak it out. Don't try to work it out in your head. As to if a spiritual thing, you'll not get it with your head. It's not by might or by power, but by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Begin to speak it out. Hallelujah. It's a language of heaven. It's a mystery of God. It allows you to live the, this Holy Spirit. One of the evidences is the fruit of the Spirit, which I'm, which I'm going to talk about later. But the, one of the evidences is to be filled with the Spirit of God and come out a new person speaking a new language of heaven. Whatever the Holy Spirit enables you to speak, hallelujah. Some people, they we all re, you know, respond differently to the anointing, to the Holy Spirit. Just begin to speak it out, whatever comes out of your mouth, whether it's a language you don't know, whether it's tongues, a barrier, sambo. Lande sanda namanda wekira hanta bakariande ah be filled in Jesus name be filled with the power and the fire of the living God in the name of Jesus oh on the same note of the anointing of God ha <laughs> mighty God I thank God those hallelujah who have any sickness and disease right now he said God when you tread upon serpents in the book of Luke 10 19 father oh Lord they shall by no means harm us oh God so father in the name of Jesus he said by the shops of Jesus these your precious people oh God they are healed in Jesus name you said God the son of God was made manifest to destroy every work of the devil. I destroy every work of the enemy. When something is destroyed, nullified, it has no chance to regroup back together again. So I break it by the power of your word. I break it by the power of your anointing. That destroys the work of bondage. I break it by the power of the blood of Jesus. That makes each and everyone who's come to know you. Hallelujah. That, that breaks. Hallelujah. That makes them overcomers in the name of Jesus. But by your stripes, these your people are healed. By your stripes, they are made whole. Put a hand wherever the pain is. Put a hand wherever the diagnosis has been given to you by the doctor. But now we're talking about the great, great physician, hallelujah, who has a power to do any and everything at any time. Hallelujah. I'm talking about if that thing was diagnosed over many years ago, he has the power to do it now and make it demolish and never to come back to you. It will never touch you again. It will never even touch your children and the children of your children. Remember that the blessing, a uh, blessing, it only it, it includes health. It only lasts, the blessing lasts for a thousand generations. If there was a curse, I break the curse in the name of Jesus by the power of the blood of Jesus. A curse lasts for four generations, but we put a stop to it now, replacing it by the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is the blessing of the Lord that maketh a man rich, wealthy. Hallelujah. With no addition of sorrow in it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Father, we thank you, God, that Lord, these your precious people, they have received the keys today, the keys of life, the keys of life, and they will never be taken away from them again. When before Jesus ascended to heaven, he says all keys have been given to him. So it applies to us as well, because being caught as and joined as with Christ sitting in heavenly places, so with Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. We have the keys. Hallelujah. The keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, God, for these, your precious people. I thank you for everyone who's been touched and healed. I thank you for everyone who's been born again and saved. Keep them, oh God, preserve them, I pray, God. Finish up, I pray, God Almighty. Hallelujah, the good work that we have started in their lives. Father, I thank you. I give you the glory. I give you the praise. Hallelujah. And I indeed give you the honor for all the honor and the praise. It belongs to you, Jesus. I worship you. And I honor you. You are mighty indeed. Everlasting Father.
I honor you. Father, hallelujah. What a privilege, what an honor. Preserve your people like you've preserved me. Keep them. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. When you worship him, he said you will bless your food and your water. You will not be sick, you will not be barren. Hold on to that word and declare it with your mouth because when you declare a thing, it shall be established. Keep declaring in Jesus' name. I love you so much. God loves you even more. See you soon.